Ugh, ads are such poop. Subscribe to ACAST Plus now to skip ads and more for just $1 a month. Click the link in our show notes to learn how. And hey, we're on Patreon too. Your support helps cover the cost of running a podcast. For $2 a month, you can get early access to all our episodes ad-free, plus bonus episodes exclusive to Patreon subscribers only. Visit patreon.com forward slash sacrilegious discourse to sign up now. From the gas pump to the grocery store, inflation is everywhere. Seriously, make it stop. Thankfully, there's one company out there that's giving you a much needed break. It's Mint Mobile. As the first company to sell premium wireless service online only, Mint Mobile lets you order from home and save a ton with phone plans starting at just $15 a month. All plans come with unlimited talk and text, plus high speed data delivered on the nation's largest 5G network. To get your new wireless plan for just $15 a month and get the plan shipped to your door for free, go to mintmobile.com slash switch. That's mintmobile.com slash switch. We've all been there. You have an unexpected medical expense. Or you get into a fender bender. But you don't have the money to pay for it immediately. Dave can help you get out of a pinch when you really need it. Dave is the banking app that could help you get up to $500 instantly with extra cash. That's more money to fill your tank, finally get your car repaired, or catch up on bills without having to wait for your next paycheck. Millions of people have already downloaded the Dave app to get the financial relief they need with extra cash. So if you're in a pinch and need some extra help, download Dave and think of it as a helping hand from future you. To download the Dave app, go to dave.com today. That's D-A-V-E dot com. Sign up for an extra cash account and get up to $500 instantly. For terms and conditions, go to dave.com slash legal. Instant transfer fees apply. Banking services provided by Evolve Bank and Trust. Member FDIC. Are you struggling to close deals? Cold outreach is wasting the time of both the buyer and seller at every stage, especially when sellers are using shallow and outdated data. Your organization can overcome these challenges with technology. We call this deep sales. And we've built the first deep sales platform with the next generation of LinkedIn Sales Navigator. Right now, you can try LinkedIn Sales Navigator and get a 60-day free trial at linkedin.com slash trial. That's linkedin.com slash trial for a 60-day free trial. Let LinkedIn Sales Navigator help you sell like a superstar today. Welcome to Sacrilegious Discourse. I'm husband. And I'm wife. Together we're reading the Bible for the very first time. We grew up without religion and wanted to know what all the fuss was about. Well, what have we learned so far? That God is a dick, and apparently some people believe in talking donkeys? We're not trying to pass ourselves off as experts. Nope, we're just reading the Bible for the first time and giving our first take reaction. If you'd like to join us in this venture, you might consider starting at episode one. Otherwise, jump in wherever you like. All right, let's go read the Bible. Yeah, let's get to it. Husband! Wife! Do you know what today is? Well, it's Saturday. Yeah, so we're doing a Q&A Saturday. Awesome. What are we uh, Q&A-ing and A-ing today? Okay, so we had three basic questions. Three? Three. Just three. The gold of Ophir, the fuck is that? Okay. Something about rocks with cream, the R- fuck is that? Right, yeah. And then... The fuck did I just read? I mean, basically. Yeah. Yeah, that, that, that was how I felt. <laughs> yeah. So, so we're, we're talking about that one chapter with all the rocks and gold and the fucking bullshit. Those are two different chapters. Okay. Well, but whatever. Yes. That bullshit. Yes. Okay. So we're going to cover that bullshit today. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, I guess let's uh, let's go find out what it is. In chapter, Job chapters 26 through 30. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. what I meant. Mm-hmm. Yeah, let's, mm-hmm. let's go do that. Let then. us. Let us tomato- okay so in answering those first two questions i thought we would go through each of the chapters a little bit like i did last time just to give a and that's what that was about what were those first two questions again um the gold of ophir and the rocks with the cream okay okay yeah so i'll get to those when i get to those got it okay Mm -hmm. so in chapter 26 
We had Job's rebuke to his friends, his rejection of Bildad's arguments, and his praise for God's majestic power. Okay. Okay. Yep. And so that chapter basically contains Job's praise to God, emphasizing his belief in the big view of God controlling his world. So he's like, God is awesome and controls everything. Although he can't understand how his suffering could possibly be part of God's good plan. Right. So it was that whole two dueling ideas that he was trying to convey. Yeah, and he's in for a about. big surprise mm. if he ever finds out. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> I, I hope he learns. Right? Like, I, wouldn't you be so fucking pissed? Yeah. Jesus Christ. I really hope he learns what happened. I, that That's, you know what, it'd be... Like, I'd love to see... This is what I want to see. I want to see Job hold his faith the whole way through. And then when he finds out, he's like, dude, fuck you. Yeah. The fuck is this shit? This you fucking kidding me? bullshit. It was a, a goddamn de- bet with the devil? Like, I still believe in you, obviously, because you clearly allowed this to happen to me. Right, but I call but bullshit, man. That's not cool. I don't know that I'm going to work. I got to take a day. Right? Yeah. Worship Definitely you. need a day. God is great. God is good. Fuck you. <laughs> Okay, so moving on. Chapter 27. Okay. Okay. Job again insists on his integrity. Remember, we commented on how he thinks he's awesome. Yeah, yeah. So he resumes his speech with a complaint that God's denial to him, or I'm sorry, that God's denial to provide him justice has greatly, greatly impacted him emotionally. He's like losing his mind. I mean, yeah, that's fair. And God has made his life bitter. Right. Which makes sense. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Because, like, not only did you do these things, which sucks enough, but now I'm being made to feel like I brought it on myself and you're not explaining it to me. Right. So that makes it even worse. Sure. And, you know, I you've left me alone in my greatest hour of need. But, you know I, mean, I mean, I, I have to ask this, too. Like, is there some expectation of God explaining things that are happening to people in this time and place? I have no idea, honestly. Is, does God explain things to a lot of people or is just Job special that way, too? I don't know. I mean, we have no indication that God has ever talked to Job before. Right. But Job feels like up until now, he's been a pretty decent guy and been rewarded rightly for it. Okay. I mean, that's basically that whole thing where we're like, dude, you're bragging about yourself. Yeah. You know, he, he was bragging about himself, but to convey, I was a good guy and I had all the prizes that come with it. Right, right. And I didn't, to my knowledge, I've done nothing to change that and yet. So I really think I'm owed an explanation. Sure. Okay. So, I mean, it's kind of like how rich people are in their bubble and they don't understand anything. So when their bubble bursts, they're like, um, excuse you, somebody explain this. To right, me. right. So Job claims a clear conscience, free of reproach. And he is still seeking God to vindicate his integrity and righteousness. So he wants God to confirm, yeah, you are a good guy. This just sucks. And here's the reason why. Right. So then in the same chapter, God accuses of friends, his friends of being among the wicked by going against him. So he's like, I'm not bad. You're bad. Job does, right? Yeah. Job is like, y'all are shitty friends. And if you're accusing me of all this, I'm pretty sure you're the ones that are bad. Right. And he states the future of the wicked. He explains where the wicked go, what happens to them. And according to Job, the wicked will eventually be driven out by God. Although for a while they seemingly prosper and they'll be swept away without pity. Right. But you and I had a hard time with that chapter because... It's like, but we all die. Yeah. You're saying they'll be swept away, but by that measure, we're all swept away. Yeah. So right. that was one of the chapters that we were like, eh, I don't think we got the right message. This really didn't sum it up well for me. Right. Like, and and really, Judaism is really vague on the whole afterlife thing. Mm-hmm. Like, we kind of covered that in one of our things mm-hmm. we've gone over already. Yeah. But, like, they don't have a great idea right. of what follows exactly. exactly. I mean, there yeah. isn't there is an idea. But it came later, and it's it's not solidified. Yeah, the early early forms of Judaism did not have a lot of need. I feel like to right. know about the afterlife. Well, I feel like early religions were more functional, like mm-hmm. you know, worship the rain god or the the crop god. Yeah, or well, whatever. They, yeah, functional is a really good way of describing. They were very concerned about surviving the here and now, right? And so 
the gods that they worshipped had to do with the here and now, not what is my purpose and not how was the earth formed and how where do we come from right, and not where are we going. You ain't got time for that immortality crap. Right. The before and after were not important. It right. was just the day-to-day bullshit. Yeah, yeah. And it's not until we had more leisure time. So one might say that um, irrigation and um, stopping um, this, what are what is it called when people like travel in, instead of remain on a farm? Nomadic. Nomadic, right. When nomadic lifestyles stopped and we started irrigation and um, heavy farming. Right. That is when we were bringing the environment to us instead of us going to the environment and allow us more time to contemplate our. Yes. Our role, our role, um, our purpose, our, how did we get here and where are we going? Right. Right. So it, it's just, was it a good thing? I don't know. I don't know if it was or not, but I mean, you know, as far as progress goes, we've made a lot of progress, but we're also, you know, ruining the planet. So and some of us are just as stupid as ever. Yeah, you know? definitely. So I don't, that's what I mean. Like we've come so far and yet. Right, right. So in chapter 22, or I'm sorry, 28. I, I you, keep, Your numbers are not working. They're not. Like the last three chapters, I just like spit out my mouth just says whatever number it wants. <laughs> like, honestly, I'm kind of concerned. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Okay. So chapter 28. Yeah is an interlude, okay? And this is where one of our questions is. It's a poem on wisdom. And remember, we kind of were like, this feels different from the other chapters, and this is a weird one, and it feels very poetic. This was the golden rock one, right? Yes, I believe so. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Um, I'll get into that in a minute, but yes, that was this chapter. Okay. And it, it just, like, fell out of place. Yeah. Guess what? It was. That's because it's out of place. Yes. Yes. Um, (laughs) Go figure. So let me talk to you a little bit about the chapter and then I'm going to get into some of the other stuff. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So in this weird poem that's just stuck in the middle there, um, it goes over the achievements of humanity and how human searching cannot find wisdom. Right. Okay. We're not going to be able to find it. Except for that, you know, except for uh, what's his face? God and... Um, well, no, but the one guy that's the wisest of all. Oh, yeah, yeah, Solomon, yeah. Solomon, Solomon. Solomon found it. Yeah. He wasn't even looking. Right? Yeah. So there was a lot of comparison to mining in that chapter. I can't... Yeah. And the analogy we were supposed to take away was that mining requires delving deep into the dark places to produce beautiful products from rocks oh. or dust. A principle that can be applied to the search for wisdom that brings hidden things to light. Okay. I, so, I can I can appreciate that to some degree, mm-hmm. but man, they muddled that fucking yeah, yeah. analogy there. I mean, I'm not great at interpreting poetry in the first place. Right. But that was just beyond my ken. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I I don't know. I, I feel like when it comes to like deep and Bible, there's a, like a, you know, disconnect there. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, I know it's there, but it feels like you have to try real hard to, mm-hmm. to figure out what it is. And I'm like, I don't, I wasn't alive 2000 years ago. I don't know. Right. And I know that's a little bit, you know. Whatever. Well, here's the thing too, with regard to, okay, no, I'll get into that in a minute. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Forget what I said. I forgot it already. Okay. So the rest of this chapter, it covers humans cannot buy wisdom and also they do not value it. So not only can't we purchase it. We you know, also have I no value for I find it. that to be very true, actually. Mm-hmm. Like, you, you, I mean, obviously you can't buy wisdom. You know, like, that's not... It's not a it's not material that, object. Right. And I find that when you try to impart wisdom on other people, they are mm-hmm. very... Not... They don't accept it. Well, here's the thing. Because it's your wisdom. You right. can't give it away. Right. It's not their wisdom. They have to discover it for themselves. No, I know. And that, it's it's, you know, it's that old... Adage that, you know, you can't change people, you know, like you, you can you, lead a horse to water, but you can't make it drink. And, right. Um, you know, it, everyone has their own path and we all have to learn our own way. Yeah. And you can tell somebody till you're blue in the face what is correct and right and the wisdom that you have about that thing. Mm-hmm. But until they learn it themselves and decide themselves to do it, mm-hmm. they will never, never do it. Never exactly. accept it. Exactly. Exactly. So... Um, God knows the way to wisdom was the last bit of that yeah, chapter. Yeah, sure. 
He and, saw it over there in the distance mm-hmm, or whatever. Mm-hmm. And he assessed it. Yeah, he assessed it. That, I, that still annoys me. <laughs> Fuck you. Okay, so. I just wonder, like, it. the way they said that implies that he did not create wisdom. Right. Which kind of is an interesting thing to it's think an about. It's take, In yeah. so far as we're talking about the Bible. Mm-hmm. So. Mm-hmm. Very interesting. Yeah. I would like to get into that sometime, but I think that would be harder to quantify as a search right but i I feel like so like i feel like god wanted to take credit for how wise solomon was Mm -hmm. because it was you know who's god's dude right right but if he didn't create it then then it didn't then it didn't come from him right so i just there's there's certain aspects about that that i find a little bit intriguing if we really delved delved into it i do want us both to keep in mind as we are going through these though that it may be an interpretation yeah. problem. No, and, and that, for sure. It may not have been phrased that way in a different interpretation. So, or I translation. Entirely. I, I get that entirely. Like, okay. that. that's not an, I, I understand. I just, I find, I don't know. It's just, it's, there's so much that I don't like about what um, religion has done to our society. Yes. That I find it hard not to, like. Nitpick it. Nitpick it, No, yeah. totally. I totally agree. I just want to make sure that we keep in mind that there is enough to hate on. Right. That we don't have to be nitpicky. Sure. And that seems to be, to me, one of those that Nit- yeah. it, it might be more difficult to find because it's just not really a fucking question that matters. Ultimately, yeah. Yeah, exactly. So that And that I don't mean to poo-poo on your irritation or say your thoughts don't matter. That's not what I mean at all by that. No, I got you. Okay. I got you. Okay. There's more immediate things we can cover and more immediate, sure. you know, shit storms that are in the Bible. So Speaking of which, let's get into the gold of Ophir. Okay. What the fuck gold. is gold of Ophir? No fucking clue. Okay. So Ophir was mentioned in Genesis chapter 10, which is the table of nations. So I don't know if you recall that it had that whole table that told um, – all the different people who they were descended from, the tribes sure, of, kind of yeah. Israel, et cetera, et cetera. Right. So Ophir in Genesis chapter 10 is said to be the name of one of the sons of Joktan. Okay. So I don't really remember Joktan that much, but he was one of them guys yeah, early one of, on. one of those guys. Got it. So um, that's just a neat little aside. Yeah. But let's get into Ophir. Yeah. Okay. Okay. It's a port or region famous for its wealth. King Solomon received a shipment from Ophir every three years. Oh. And that was mentioned in 1 Kings chapter 10. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And I don't remember that it was Ophir, but I do remember that he received a shipment yeah. from somewhere. Right. I remember that as well. And his shipments consisted of gold, silver, sandalwood, pearls, ivory, apes, and peacocks. Got it. You remember that? Yeah, yeah. We well, I, like, I don't remember the peacocks and the apes, but I remember the gold and silver. See, I remember the peacock and the apes because I was like, he is having them animals shipped over there. <laughs> that is crazy. So it was a city and it was a very rich city. Got it. Okay. Yeah. And it was mentioned before. We just didn't pick it up because it wasn't described as that. Right, right. Okay. So listen to this. It's so interesting. In 1946, an inscribed pottery shard was found in modern-day Tel Aviv, dating to the 8th century BC. And it bears, in Paleo-Hebrew script, the text, Gold of Ophir 2-4 Beth Haran, 30 shekels. Oh, wow. The find confirms that Ophir was indeed a place from which gold was fucking imported. Wow. How about that? That is really cool, actually. Okay, I've got an even better one. Ready? Yeah, I'm ready. In 1976, so this is the year after I was born, so yeah. this is in my fucking lifetime, <laughs> the United States Department of Interior announced that a team formed by the United States Geological Survey, together with experts from Saudi Arabia, believes it has a fairly airtight case that Mod Ad Dahab, or the Cradle of Gold in Saudi Arabia, is the biblical Ophir. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's really neat. Yeah. Interesting. How about that? Yeah. It did exist, and it's probably a city in Saudi Arabia referred to as the Cradle of Gold. Very cool. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. So 
I, I just, that, that kind of shook me a little, yeah. but um, there were questions about where the city was located and um, they were suggesting various places like Africa, various places like India. Um, but in 1976, they pretty much settled on Saudi Arabia. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah. So, oh, I wanted to say another thing about um, this poem. Okay. Um, that is just like here randomly. Yeah. There's some arguments that the same person that wrote Job, if it was Job himself, did not write this chapter. Got it. So it's just like an ill-placed thing. Mm -hmm. Not ill-placed, but like a... Yeah. It, and it is They shunted it in there. Yes. Yeah. Some people, or some Bibles, I should say, place it at the end of Job. And some say that it's not biblically accurate at all. And they remove it. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Okay. So there's a lot of controversy over this chapter. Got it. Which I Got found it. very interesting. Yeah. And I was not expecting that. But right. I do like that you and I were like, this chapter is weird. I mean, it is And weird. it is. Right. So we were on the right track. Yeah. We're dum-dums, but we're not complete and utter dum-dums. Good on us. Yes. I guess. So um, let's go back to our chapter, though, and finish it out. Chapter 28, we're still on. Okay. So only God knows the location and nature of wisdom. and. Right. Um, he also makes it known to others. Okay. Okay. So, yay. So, um, further on in the ending of chapter 28, the fear of God and wisdom. Um, the entire refrain of this poem asks the question, where shall wisdom be found? And then the closing statement apparently gives the answer, which is the fear of the Lord. That is wisdom. Which we called bullshit. We did. We did call it that. Yeah. And I still call bullshit because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. that's crap. No, totally agree. And then just to reiterate, since the tone of Job 28 is calm by comparison to the other ones where he's like in anguish. Yeah. And he's like so insulting or just um, pulling his hair out and ripping his sackcloth or what the fuck ever. Yeah. Um, there is debate about whether Job is really the speaker of the whole chapter. And um, another thing that I didn't write down, but I, I recall reading is that also the phrasing of it, which this might bore you to tears, but of <laughs> course, as a writer, I just was like, whoa, that's interesting. Um, a lot of the other chapters um, had like a, a third party outside the narrative saying, and Job continued right. right at the beginning of the chapter when it went from Job talking in one chapter to Job talking in the next chapter. Sure. sure. Right. But this poem does not do that. It just starts in Got the it. middle of just nowhere. The rest of it, yeah. Yeah. So that's that whole like um, grammarly, you know, keeping track of the way you write and keeping it the same from chapter to chapter. And, yeah. you know, when there's a difference, it's not that they fucked up so much as that it probably is out of place. Right, right. So um, the next part is... Job's summing shit up, okay? And that actually goes from chapter 29 all the way through chapter 31, which we haven't read yet. Okay. okay? All right. Yep. But in chapter 29, this whole part is framed by Job's longing for a restored relationship with God. Yeah. So again, he's like so back and forth. He's like, this sucks. God sucks. I demand an answer. Oh, you're awesome, though. Yeah. <laughs> It, like, it's so wish-washy. It's giving me fucking whiplash, you know? Yeah, yeah. So the first part of chapter 29, right? He's going over his former blessings, and it's a description of Job's relationship with God and his family and personal circumstances prior to all this happening. Okay. And it's his friendship with God that Job desperately misses. Right. Okay. So in that bit, that's when we talk about the rock poured out cream. Yeah. So that was just like... I thought the rock poured out olive oil. No, there was cream. Yeah, um, the, the streets were covered in cream and then the oh, rock yeah, poured yeah, out yeah. olive oil. Yeah, you're right. You're right. I'm sorry. Um, The whole thing was just like this badly phrased um metaphor yeah. that we missed. Okay? okay. Yeah. Because what it was referring to, and we even mentioned this at the time, the olive trees that thrived in rocky soil... The oil presses were cut into the rock. Okay. So there was oil literally on the rocks. Got and it. He was able to walk through his fields and there was oil on the rocks because he was so rich. He had so many uh, olive trees okay. that 
you they know, were all covered in oil that yeah. they cut. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So he's like, the rocks pour veritably pour out oil. Right. Like, right. Not actually literally metaphorically. Right, right. I got it. And the same with the cream. Um, there were other words mentioned. It might have been curdles, or it might have been uh, not curdles, curds, <laughs> or something else. It basically was saying that he had a lot of fucking goats and shit. So he had milk. And yeah, so he had. He was rich. He had all of these things. Right. That he had so much of that it was just raining from the skies, metaphorically. Got it. Okay. Got it. Yeah. So that clears that up, and that's a lot less. Yeah. That's yeah. Impressive. I right. guess. Right. It's less fun. I, Definitely, yeah. But, I wanted I mean, to make fun of it. But at least we know now. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So It was just more poetic tomfoolery. Right. So the rest of chapter 29 goes over uh, Job's former honor, the description of his place in the community. Remember, he's telling us how awesome he was. Yeah, and how shitty other people were. Yeah. yeah. And um, how he used to administer justice and um, gave a description of him actively working towards that for people who were bereft or downtrodden yeah as he was also calling those people shitty he's like remember all of those disgusting ugly shitty people <laughs> right? that i helped yeah and it's like i don't think you just said what you meant to say i, I just can't leave that part alone like i'm sorry but it, as, as we like to say nowadays you said the quiet part out loud my good sir right <laughs> yeah so um it goes from there to his expectation of ongoing peace like, yeah. he just assumed that his good life was going to last forever because he's like, I'm, I'm not doing guy. anything wrong. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I'm, even though I hate these people, they suck. I'm, I'm helping <laughs> them nonetheless. I'm doing everything I'm supposed to do. Right. Uh, you know, I'm um, apologizing for all the bads that my children do. Right. You know, yeah. all, at their fucking drunk fest parties. Sure. That I'm assuming, you know, they're having. Yeah. So um, that chapter closes then with Job's prominence as a respected leader in the community. Right. Okay. Yep. So he's just like, I had it all. And then chapter 30, we go into Job's present suffering. Okay. Yeah. And chapter 30 describes Job's suffering after his world was turned upside down in stark contrast with chapter 29, where he was on top of the world. Right. From enjoying the respect of the most respectable to undergoing the contempt of the most contemptible. Yeah. And remember, he was talking about some people that. He compared them to dogs that he wouldn't even yes. he wouldn't even let those people sleep with his dogs. Right. Because yeah. they were that. No, lonely. it was really fucking bad. It was very bad. So, uh, again, I think we both agree he's not as great as he thinks he is. No, I don't think he is. And so then um, the chapter starts with how Job would have viewed his mockers and the attacks of his enemies and the attacks of his mockers are depicted as overwhelming in their severity and persistence. Got so it. he's like, <laughs> everybody's mean to me and this isn't fair because I, you know, prior to this, they were all shit and now they're shitting on me. Like right. I'm shit and I'm not shit. They're shit. Right. Right. So God is causing his present sufferings and Job goes to accuse God and he withdraws into despair. Okay. Yeah. And Job reiterates his conviction that God is in total control of his life. So he complains that he was not given mercy by God. And Job hopes for restoration, but seems to face disaster so he can only see bleak pictures of his future life. The end. Got it. Okay. And that's where we finished off. Yeah. So we talked about the cream. We talked about um, Ophir, the city of gold. Right. And we summarized. Um, that the chap one of the chapters felt weird, and we learned about what all the chapters meant. Yeah, so yeah. That's well, at least we had some stuff to talk about this week. Yeah, we've been running short on that lately. So, well, some when it's straightforward, yeah, it's hard to come it's up hard. with a question. Yeah, yeah. But this time we had some actual. The fuck is that? And the fuck did I just read? And right. the fuck are those? Yep. So that was fun. Yeah, no, it was. I like it. Mm -hmm. So that was good. All right, so that was our Q&A for today. Yes, it was. And we will be back tomorrow with... Sacrilegious Book Club. And what are we going over on that one? Is it going to be the folklore? Well, yeah. I'm just making sure. Because we, we said a while back we'd bounce back and forth occasionally to the Asimov one. So I just... You no, know. I'm not ready to go back to Asimov yet. I'm still okay. mad at him. Okay. All right. We might... But we're going to go back at some point, though, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Like, I, I keep saying, don't throw we out the We just had baby. somebody reach out to us and say, hey, I'm, you know, I, I'm following along with the Asimov thing. Mm, yeah, so. yeah, yeah. So we should get back to that. Don't throw out the baby with the bathwater. I know. Right, I know. right. We will get back to Asimov. I'm okay. just not 
there yet. All right. Well, Let then... me get to a better stopping point in this um, Jewish folklore. Okay. Okay. Right. So enough. that's what we're reading tomorrow. Yep. And then I'll uh, get out our weekly replay tomorrow. And uh, then we'll be back on Monday with... Job chapter 31. All right. We'll see you guys then. Yep. Bye. Hey, wife, I guess that's the end. But husband, that's just sad. It doesn't have to be. We are on lots of social media platforms like Twitter. Our handle there is sacrilegious underscore D. For D's nuts. Oh my God. Stop doing that. Anyway, we're also on Facebook, Instagram, and Pinterest. There's a link to all of our social media sites at our website. Ooh, we have a website? Yeah, it's sacrilegiousdiscourse.com, where you can also find a link to our merch shop. We have a merch shop? Yep. We have podcast-themed clothing, mugs, notebooks, and more, as well as an atheist and science-themed products. Wow, our fans should really go check that out right now. Definitely. They can get in touch with us by sending an email to sacrilegiousdiscourse at gmail.com. But before they do that, we could really use some help. Oh, yeah? With what? Well, it's not free running the podcast, and we need some financial support in order to get better equipment, which will free up time so we can concentrate on our podcast and our fans. Okay, so what should they do? Head over to patreon.com forward slash sacrilegious discourse and sign up as a contributor on our podcast. Supporters there receive additional bi-weekly episodes that we record just for our Patreon members for as little as $2 a month. Also, we'd really appreciate it if you would like and subscribe on whatever platform you're using. And Apple Podcast Reviews help us out tremendously. Like and subscribe. Leave an Apple review. Join us on Twitter. Support us on Patreon. That's a lot of instructions. Don't forget to say thanks. Thanks. Okay, bye. Are you struggling to close deals? Cold outreach is wasting the time of both the buyer and seller at every stage, especially when sellers are using shallow and outdated data. Your organization can overcome these challenges with technology. We call this Deep Sales, and we've built the first Deep Sales platform with the next generation of LinkedIn Sales Navigator. Right now, you can try LinkedIn Sales Navigator and get a 60-day free trial at linkedin.com slash trial. That's linkedin.com slash trial for a 60-day free trial. Let LinkedIn Sales Navigator help you sell like a superstar today. Surgeons keep our hearts beating. They do the amazing, help save lives, and so can you. Your CSL Plasma donation can help create 24 critical life-saving medicines that can give Grandpa the chance for his heart to swell when he meets his new grandson or give a bride the chance for her heart to skip a beat on her wedding day. Every plasma donation helps more than you know. Do the amazing. Help save lives. Donate today at your local CSL Plasma Center and be rewarded for your generosity.